In this video, we will look at the config menu on the web portal and all the configurations and settings available within it. The config menu is where the bulk of the register configurations are applied. You will typically use this section when setting up your account and when making changes to your system. The aim of this video is to give you an understanding of each section within the config menu. The settings entered in this video will not necessarily apply to your business. We do have a set of complete end-to-end -end merchant setup videos available that provide details on suitable settings to apply to your business. After logging into the web portal, click the config button in the top bar. This will then show a sub-menu of items to choose from. First, we are going to configure discounts, so we will go ahead and click discounts from the sub-menu. The discount section allows us to create fixed discounts that can be applied to items and transactions within register. To create a new discount, click the New Discount button. In the Discount form, you must first give the discount a name, select either a percentage or value-based discount and enter the value. You can also enter an optional barcode that can be scanned to apply the discount to a transaction. After entering all the discount information, click the Save button. In this example, we have created a 20% staff discount, which we can see here on the till. Each discount added will be displayed in the table. We can edit the discount by tapping the pen icon, disable the discount from the tills by clicking the cross icon, re-enable a discount by tapping the tick icon, and delete any discount by tapping the trash can icon. The next item in the config submenu is the lists option. Here we can see all the lists used within register, as well as create new lists that can be used elsewhere in the system. For instance, all the refund reasons will be in a list in this section. Each list will be displayed in the table. We can edit the list name by tapping the pen icon, view the items within the list by tapping the list icon, and delete any custom lists by tapping the trash can icon. The list name will then be displayed followed by the type. A system list is automatically generated and used by register. System lists can be edited but not deleted. Custom lists are manually created lists. These are lists that you would add for custom fields within your CRM such as hair colour or dietary requirements, an alternative list of things you would book appointments against such as tables or tanning booths, and finally a list of items you would suspend transactions against such as tables or tab numbers. To view a list's items, tap the list icon in the row you wish to view. The main window is now displaying all the list items within that list. You can edit the item by clicking the pen icon and entering a different value. You can remove an item from the list by clicking the trash can. And finally, you can change the order the list items are displayed in. To do this, move your mouse over the item name and click and drag into the desired position. When you have finished editing the list, click the close button to return to all lists. To create a custom list, click the new list button and give your list a name. After clicking save, we will see the list items screen we saw a moment ago. To add items, simply click the new item button, enter the item name and click save. Repeat this process until you have entered all your list items. You can make changes to your list at any time. In this example, we have created a list of tables to suspend transactions against, which we can see here on the till. The next section in the config submenu is product browsers. The product browser is the selection of products that are displayed in the middle of the register client. After clicking product browsers from the config submenu, the main window will display a table of product browsers that have been created. You can edit an existing browser by tapping the pen icon, duplicate a browser by tapping the copy icon, and delete a browser using the trash can. To create a new browser, click the new product browser button. The product browser screen looks slightly different to what we have seen elsewhere in the web portal. The first step is to give the browser a name that makes sense as you can have multiple browsers configured. Below the name we have two tables. The left table shows which items are in the product browser and in what order. The right table is a search area for locating products you wish to add. To add items to a browser, it is a simple case of searching for the product in the right table, then dragging the product onto the plus icon in the left table. You can also replace items already in the browser by placing the new item on top of an existing one, and if you want to remove an item, simply tap the trash can icon. Keep adding items until you have all the desired products in the left table. Most retailers use the product browser for popular items, non-barcoded items, and items sold at the till point. Once you have added all the desired items, click the Save button. In the interest of time, we will speed this process up. We can see how the product browser we have just created looks on the register here. Next in the Config submenu is Profiles. A 
profile is essentially a collection of settings that will be applied to a register. You might want to create multiple profiles so registers in separate areas are configured differently. For instance, you might have a retail register and a cafe register. Like product browsers, the main window will display a table of profiles that have been created. You can edit an existing profile by tapping the pen icon, duplicate a profile by tapping the copy icon, and delete a profile using the trash can. To create a new profile, click the New Profile button and first give the profile a name, and click the Create button. You will then see a number of sections, each containing a subset of settings that can be applied. Click the section name to expand the list of settings. First, you will see the setting name, followed by the setting value, and finally an info button that provides more details on that setting. All the settings can be adjusted either by selecting an option from a drop-down menu, entering a number or text value, or selecting either a yes or a no option. We will now show some examples of these. Full details on all the settings can be found in the user manual. The first setting we can see is automatically update register. With this setting, we can control when the register will automatically carry out the update data process to keep the register's products up to date. To change the setting, click the drop-down menu and click on the desired option. In this case, update data on start day. If we want to see additional information on the setting, click the I button which will display an information window. The next setting we will look at is log out after x seconds. By adjusting the number value, we can control how long the register is idle for before logging out automatically. In this instance, we will change this from 120 seconds or 2 minutes to 300 seconds or 5 minutes. The final setting we will look at is enable CRM. We can quickly adjust this setting by clicking the yes button rather than no. After you have finished editing your profile, scroll down to the bottom of the page and click the save button to submit all the changes and then tap the close button to return to the profiles list. As you can see, our new profile is now displayed in the table. The next section in the config submenu is staff. Here we can manage all the staff members that have access to register. After clicking staff from the config submenu, the main window will display a table of staff members along with their role that have been created. You can edit a staff member by tapping the pen icon and delete a member of staff using the trash can. To add a new member of staff to the register, click the new staff member button and complete the staff form. The staff member form requires almost all information to be entered. This includes the first name, surname and staff number. A four digit pin number the staff member uses to log in with the staff role, which will either be a standard POS user, a POS supervisor, or a timekeeping user. Select if the staff member is available in the calendar to book appointments against, which is typically done in the services environment, for example, when a customer books to get their hair done by a stylist. Into the commission rate if your staff member gets paid commission. And finally, tick which stores the staff members operate in. Only the staff commission is optional. All the other fields are mandatory and are clearly displayed required. After entering all the staff information, click the Save button and you will be returned to the staff list. Stores are the next section in the config submenu. This is where we manage all our stores. After clicking Stores from the config submenu, the main window will display a table of stores that have been created, much like we saw with staff members. You can edit a store's details by tapping the pen icon and delete a store using the trash can. To create a new store, click the New Store button and enter the details in the store form. The store name, number and address details are mandatory and clearly labelled as required. Email and phone are optional but it is recommended to enter these details just in case your solution provider needs to get in touch. Next we select what the store uses for booking appointments against. The appointment resource type drop-down contains staff by default as well as all lists created on the system like we saw earlier. Select the appropriate resource type from the menu. For instance, if you are a salon, you will likely select staff. If you are a restaurant, you might select the tables list. After entering all the store information, click the save button and you will be returned to the stores list. The next section in the config submenu is taxes. Here we can add all the appropriate tax rates that are applicable. After clicking taxes from the config submenu, the main window will display a table of tax rates that have been created. You can edit a tax by tapping the pen icon and delete a tax using the trash can. 
To create a new tax rate, click the New Tax button and enter the details in the tax form. The tax form requires a tax name, a tax code and a tax rate. There is no limit to the number of tax rates you can create. The tax rates created can then be applied against products and controlled via profiles. The final section of the config submenu is tender types. This is where we can set up any additional tender types that are not built into register by default, such as checks and coupons. After clicking tender types from the config submenu, the main window will display a table of tender types other than cash and card. You can edit an existing tender type by tapping the pen icon, duplicate one by tapping the copy icon, and delete a tender type using the trash can. To add an additional tender, click the config from the top bar and click tender types on the sub menu. Click the new tender type button to add the new payment method, which in this example will be checks. On the tender form, first give the tender type a name, then we have some options to choose from. The first being if we want the cash drawer to open or not. The note mode allows us to configure if a notes message appears when tendering. In this case, we will say it is required as we want our staff members to record the check number in the transaction. We can then select if we would like a confirmation displayed, if the tender type should be in the cashing up process when we do an end of day, and if we can refund against this tender type. After entering your configurations, tap the save button and you will be returned to the tender type list. Further information on the web portal configurations can also be found in your user manual, and if you still have any questions, please get in touch with your solution provider who will be able to offer further assistance.